So here's the next video in what seems to be a wave of what's going to be Pokemon content. I didn't mean for this to happen, but Pokemon is just a huge thing that I've been into for years and years and years, and quite frankly, I have a lot to say about it. So, <laughs> I mean, it's just the way it is. This is a fandom that has proceeded that I've been into and I have enjoyed since my early childhood, all the way into present day, where I literally just a week ago had a Pokemon-themed birthday party for my daughter, in which, at the end of that party, at the end of the night, proceeded into Pokemon battles on Pokin Tournament, and then the next day was raid battles trying to get the Raichus that dropped on Pokemon Sword and Shield. So, I mean... Oh, and we got her the expansion pack, and now I'm getting the expansion the next, like, the next week, and this is just a fandom that has preceded my entire life, and now is even bigger that I have a daughter that, I can, that, that can enjoy it with me. And not to mention, when my wife married me, before she married me, to be, for, to, to be fair, my wife is into Pokemon as well. It's like an entire, literal, tied-together fandom inside of my family. It is hugely important to me, and I've got a lot to say about it. So I guess for a while there's literally going to be a wave of Pokemon content on this channel, and we're starting here with a type of starters list. This is going to be Gen 1 starters. Let's talk about them. So here's how this is going to work. I'm going to create a list. This is going to basically be a top five countdown from the one I'm most likely to choose every time I play the game to the one I'm least likely to choose every time I play the game. Why five? Because I realize that Fire and Leaf and Let's Go are not actually Gen 1 games. But they are Gen 1 games. They are remakes of the Gen 1 games, and so I count their starters as a choice in this lineage. Because if you're picking, if you're, if, you still have the choice. Even the games that force you into this one guy, like let's say the Let's Go's, you were still picking between Eevee and Pikachu. These are still. This is still a starter choice. When you buy the game, there is a conscious decision that you are making to pick a starter. And just like years ago, we had red, blue, and yellow. And it was very possible that by the time you got into the game, all three of these versions were already on the market. In fact, I have literal literal confirmation on the last video where people said, I got into it in yellow, so I had the Pikachu. That was a choice that you make at some point to pick yellow over the other two versions. So let's talk about this list. So in number five spot, it's Bulbasaur. That's simple. Look, guys, I already told you the story. I told you about how I made a mistake, and how that led to my first pick, and how my first pick from that point became way more important to me than I ever realized he would be, and he wasn't even technically my first pick, but man, that is a happy accident. It's a happy accident because it led me to liking a Pokemon enough to put him in the top spot here in this Basically, he's the top spot in this countdown because he's number five, which makes him the top of the list because the lowest of the list is the one that I will not pick. <laughs> um, but look, there's a multitude of different things that go into this. And one of the things that go into this is that he taught me different versatility also. Like with things like Charizard and Squirtle, when I go through the game with those two, or when I did go through the game with those two, I just wrecked. I just wrecked house. But, like, Bulbasaur taught me to slow down a little bit and really think, and surprisingly, Bulbasaur was the thing that taught me in RPGs to utilize things like, um, uh, like, uh, slow and shell and, 
uh, haste. And he was the one that taught me status effect stuff and why it's important in scenarios like boosting your defense and things like that. Without him, I pretty much played Pokemon as a powerhouse. I just got a guy, got a really good attack, blasted my way through the competition, and moved on with my day. But he taught me to slow down a little bit. And this goofy little frog changed my outlook and made me better at other games like Final Fantasy IV, where using things like slow and haste and shell actually make a huge difference in the game. You slow the boss, you haste your team, you shell, you do things like that in Part Four, and it makes a huge difference to getting you through the game, where before, when I was trying to powerhouse that game, I had a legitimate tough time. But thanks to Bulbasaur... I can walk through Final Fantasy IV now. He's at the top of my list. He's the one I pick more often than anybody. Now, in the number four spot, we have Charmander. I mean, guys, he's the reason I bought the game. He's the reason I bought the game. And I also love this iconic look that I get from him. Uh, Bulbasaur feels like He's mine. Like, he matches me. He feels like that's where he belongs. Where, for the main character, Red, through association, through all the fan art I've seen, through, of course, now the anime, but even before the anime, I always felt, always felt like Charmander was the one that Red picked. I felt like that is where... It belongs. It makes perfect sense to me that Red picks Charmander and that blue or green, depending on the translation you want to go by, because in our game, technically, the Gary-esque character was blue, but in actuality, he was green, and now there's a... Yeah. That character makes a lot of sense to me as being the one that picks the Bulbasaur. Always has, always will. And that's the rivalry that I see in those two characters. But for me personally, this is the reason I even bought the game. I mean, not the reason I bought the game, because to be fair, I would have bought it one way or the other. Uh, but when I looked at the two and I was making a conscious decision as to which one of these two games I wanted to take home, I took home the dragon. The turtle was really close, but I took home the dragon. And then it was because of an accident that I ended up picking Bulbasaur, which puts Bulbasaur at the top of my list to this day. But the only reason I bought the red version was for this guy. And there have been many times that I've played this game that I've said, I'm doing a Charmander run. In the number three spot, we have Squirtle. Now, this might sound like he's at the bottom of the list for people that only consider the Kanto starters as to be these three people, but he's, he's not at the bottom of the list. And keep in mind, I like all of these Pokemon. Literally all of the Kanto starters are in the top tier of Pokemon in terms of design and people that I would put on my team. So... This is not demeaning this character at all. Keep in mind, there's a lot of love here. And in fact, this guy was tough to put in spot three. Because spot three and four, I fought with myself for a while in terms of this list. See, there have been many times over the years that Squirtle has taken Charmander's spot and been the one that I prefer. And then Charmander will sneak back up there and then Squirtle will sneak back up there, and they just kind of swap places. And in this current time, at this current point, he's, ra he's raising up again. But because of competitively, what I've seen done lately for Charizard and the new forms on top of new forms that he has got because of Mega Evolutions and so on and so forth, his versatility keeps him just one step above this Squirtle, where the Squirtle, like I saw the newest Gigantamax evolution and uh, more cannons. I guess he's a walking fortress now. I guess that's cool, but 
come on, there had to be something else we could have done besides more more cannons. I don't. But then I guess you could make the same argument. This is where he is on my list, and you could tell I'm arguing with myself right now about this spot. These guys were close, and this he barely made this spot. Barely made this spot. So let's talk about these last two spots. Let's talk about spot number two. Pikachu. Narratively, what they did with Pikachu works very well. He works very well. I like the way he looks on the protagonist's shoulder. Uh, I just said protagonist because I recently came across information that tells me that that character in the new Let's Go Pikachu is not red. He's a different character altogether, which is confusing because now it creates this issue with alternate universes or alternate story or something about basically retconning everything that I've known since Pokemon and yada yada, and it just it causes problems with me. The fact that the fact that they added this new kid whose name is like Trace, who I thought was technically green because the girl's name is... Le it's, a, it's a problem, okay? But regardless, he looks great and he plays the narrative well, except for one major problem. I don't like... Because here's the truth of it. Pokemon is about is a story about a kid that starts in one place, a very childish, safe, innocent town, pallet town. He then goes out into the world, and his Pokemon, if they level up, they evolve, they change, and they grow, and that is a signification that he himself is growing, maturing, and advancing, and moving through this journey. He is no longer the same person that he was by the time you figure... This whole thing started because a scientist gave you a tiny little creature and you walked into the grass, went up the street, and got him, got him a parcel that you then took back to him. That's the beginning of your journey. And it's a thousand times, you're a thousand times removed from that moment by the time you get to the end where you're dealing with the gangsters of the region and you're trying to become a champion while at the same time you're trying to forge your own ideas in life and you're trying to do what's right. And this Pikachu stagnates that idea by never evolving. And here's another thing, just to, just to put it out there. Uh, there's a little bit of bias that I'm going to do here. I'm a Raichu fan. A thousand percent, a thousand percent, I like Raichu more. I have liked Raichu since the day I discovered his existence in the anime when they get to Lieutenant Surge and they reveal that giant awesome mouse. That is my Pikachu. Raichu is where I want to be. And in order to put a Raichu on my team now, because I'm a storyline kind of guy, I don't like to take the starter off the team in my first run through because it feels disingenuous. I think the starter is important to the campaign and the overall actual structure of telling the story. And I don't like to take that Pikachu off my shoulder because narratively he makes a ridiculous amount of sense. But in order to get a Raichu, I have to take two spots in my team for electric guys and that is poor team building. So I don't want to do it. I don't want a Pikachu and a Raichu. And then in the long run, except for the fact that they basically gave that Pikachu perfect stats so that you could deal with the fact that he wasn't going to evolve, if you go to Sword and Shield or anything else like that, you get that Pikachu, that same Pikachu, and it's allowed to Gigantamax, which makes it a Chubby Chew, which is cool until you realize that at level 100 and, tops, and top on the Gigantamax, leveling up the Dynamax as high as it'll go and having the stats as high as they're going to go with a level 100 Pikachu and a level 100 Raichu, the Raichu is better. For me, in my experience, it's always better. I don't like that he can't evolve. I think it hurts the narrative, and I think... Uh, I'm not Ash Ketchum. I'm not. I want to move and evolve and experience and go forward. 
I don't want to be stuck with the same guy forever that never changes, that's always just Pikachu, that never evolves. I don't want that. I have, n- I have no desire to do that. It's fine for a while. But that's what puts him so low on this list, because I like him. But if I have a choice between red, blue, and yellow, I will play red or blue before I will play yellow. Yellow gives me a shot at all three of those starters that I've already mentioned I like, but it also gimps my team with a Pikachu that never evolves that bothers me. So, even though I like Let's let's Go Eevee and Let's Go Pikachu, they sit at the bottom of my list in terms of games that I pick to play first because I have to have that Pikachu. And now we're going to talk about spot one. Spot one is the guy that I more than likely will not be picking. That is Eevee. Eevee is at the lowest point of this list for one very important reason, one major important reason, one unbelievably huge reason that I've already complained about. He cannot evolve. I don't think he looks good in terms of being Red's partner or whoever this new kid's name is. But I also don't think he looks good as the it, it looks looks fine with the girl. Evie looks fine with the girl. Doesn't look to me. Pikachu seems to match better with the boy. But that doesn't fix the biggest problem. Evie's entire thing is evolution. It's it's even referred to as the evolutionary Pokemon, right? And you can't evolve. That. That is just game-breaking to me. In fact, if you told me that it could evolve, then he would be at the top of my list every single time because you pick that starter. In fact, I would argue that Eevee could be the perfect starter for literally any Pokemon game ever because you get an Eevee, and then around the fourth gym you get a chance at one of three stones. Or nowadays it would be more than that because Leaf and yada yada. But that would be perfect because you, you build up that EV stats, you work with it, you get used to this idea, you develop some decent moves, then you have a chance at picking the type that your team is lacking. Need an electric guy, need a leaf guy, need an ice guy, need a psychic guy, need a, you get the idea. It's perfect But then we come to this game in the Gen 1 starters. In the Gen 1 starters, a starter that cannot evolve ranks low on my list. And a starter whose literal entire gimmick is evolution ranks very low on my list because he can't evolve. That doesn't make any sense to me. It's just a complete waste. It's it just, I can't, I can't. I... So you, you get an idea of how I feel about this situation. Him not being able to do what he's supposed to do by the very concept, gimmick, and nature of what he's supposed to do makes him pointless to me. Even though I will admit he's cute. And even though I will admit that in terms of the special moves that you can get for him through Let's Go, through Let's Go Eevee, uh, they're pretty sweet moves, and they're pretty strong moves, but that still brings up, again, my fucking problem that if he just would have been able to evolve, we wouldn't have needed special stats and special moves because if he could have evolved, he would have got special stats and special moves because I would have evolved him. That's why he sits at the lowest part of my list. And keep in mind, I like Eevee. So that was it. That was the list. That was the entire list of all the original starters, the five guys that you had to pick from and where I rank them in terms of how often I'll play through the game as each one of them, from the one I pick the most to the one I more than likely will only run through the game once with and then probably be done and never do that crap again. So, that's all I got. I'll see you again to talk about the Gen 2 starters.
I have spoken. Take what you will from it. <laughs>